Thank you for the introduction. Uh, I'd like to thank Toshiba for inviting me to give this lecture about your interesting topic, the clinical benefits of iterative reconstruction. We all know that uh, image quality, there is an inherent relationship between image quality and the radiation dose in CT. But what is the, the clinical benefit of the iterative reconstruction? The problem is that today we don't like these noisy images with uh, reconstructed with the filter back projection, as you can see in this axial and 3D view. In the past, we obtained high uh, image quality and CT at the cost of a high radiation dose. So this is the overview of my presentation. After a short introduction, I will, I will overview some clinical benefits related to the cardiac CT to end with a conclusion. This slides provide the uh, major changes in the CCTA technology in the first decade of the 21st century. And you can see that there is an increase of the number of detectors and the, um, and the coverage from four detectors and four millimeters to uh, a coverage of 16 centimeters and 320 detectors. While there is a decrease of the gantry rotation time from 500 milliseconds to 270 milliseconds uh, for single source scanners. At the same time, different standard dose reduction strategies have been implemented, such as the tube voltage reduction from 120 to 100 kV, the dynamic collimation with in helical scanning, the change from retrospective to prospective uh, ECG gating in cardiac CT, and the automated exposure control. More recent dose saving strategies include the high pitch dual source scanners, the wide coverage scanners, such as the 320 slice scanner, and the integrated iterative reconstruction. So the image quality in CT is most often quantified as the amount of noise in the image defined as a standard deviation, and this is in relationship to the spatial resolution defined as the line pairs per centimeter. And compared to the filter back projection, the iterative reconstruction refers to an algorithm using a mathematical and statistical modeling to reduce the image noise by repeating iterative cycles. And this slide is the evolution of Toshiba's commitment to reduce the radiation dose with the iterative reconstruction, the RD3D, and the first, as we will see with the next presentation, as the latest implemented, clinically implemented uh, dose reduction modalities. So, and the main purpose of the iterative reconstruction is the overall reduction of the radiation dose while maintaining the same image quality. And this has been particularly important in the field of cardiac CT. Also, improved image quality can be obtained due to the, due to the iterative reconstruction in specific patient population groups. Iterative reconstruction has shown that has been, uh, there has been uh, several studies um, evaluating the relationship between the radiation dose reduction, the image noise, and the image quality. And a 39% reduction of image noise while maintaining the same image quality has been reported by you using iterative reconstruction compared to the filter back projection. On the other hand, a dose reduction of up to 50% reported by Shen, or even up to 75% as reported by the previous speaker, using while maintaining the same image quality using the RD3D reconstruction compared to the filter back projection. And this has led to the implementation of new applications such as the ultra-low dose pediatric cardiac CT scanner the myocardial perfusion CT at 100 kV and um, a better contrast, and the coronary subtraction cardiac CT. Here you see a clinical example of a pediatric cardiac CT with a dose length product of 3.7 milligray. 
It was a four-year-old boy with a history of an abnormal origin of the right coronary artery, the left sinus of Falsalva, with a high interarterial course, as you can see on the MIP and the posterior 3D view. Another clinical example of stress perfusion, myocardial CT. You can see at the rest CT, there is a 60 70% stenosis of the proximal LAD, which was conferred at an invasive coronary angiography. And the stress myocardial perfusion CT shows a hypodense subendocardial zone in the mid to the apical third of the left ventricle myocardium, indicating that there is myocardial ischemia. And this was conferred with an invasive FFR measurement of 0.75. The effective radiation dose of both the rest and the stress cardiac CT was around 5 millisievert, and this is less than the 8, milli, the 8 millisievert uh, uh, reported in Europe and the 11 millisievert in the rest of the world of the SPEC scans reported in a recent paper. Moreover, with cardiac CT, we have both morphological and hemodynamical information. Many presentations have shown uh, a very low radiation dose and a low amount of contrast medium in many patients, as you can see, in this patient, 44-year-old woman, 0.16 millisievert, and only 36 cc of contrast was injected. But I think it's very important to show you also more challenging cases, obese patients, patients with arrhythmia, and so on. So positive results have been reported in patients with a higher body mass index and with an improved image quality and similar radiation dose using the iterative reconstruction compared to the filter back projection. And you can see in this clinical case, a 50-year-old obese female with a dose length product of 132, compared to the filter back projection, you have a less noise with the R3D reconstruction with a better visualization of the distal segments. And a specific patient population group with um, obese patients and a body mass index of more than 30 kilograms per meters, a radiation dose reduction of up to 50% with similar image quality has also been reported. Given these technical advances um, with the, of the second generation volumetric 3 on a 20 slice scanner, the Achille One Vision, with a faster gantry rotation time, a coverage of up to 16 centimeters, the integrated iterative reconstruction and the automated exposure control, we did a, a study to evaluate the CCTA motion-related, uh, uh, the CCTA, the patient-related factors on the CCTA motion-related image quality in 200 patients. And we found that the body mass index, the age, and the gender of the patient had no significant impact. And interestingly was that the coronary segment diameter was the most important patient-related factor determining the CCTA image quality, while a higher heart rate and a higher Agatzen score had a less negative impact. Here you see a clinical example of um, the image quality in a smaller uh, coronary branch, the first diagonal branch, was in a 63-year-old very obese female with a body mass index of 37 kilograms square meters, um, very high heart rate, 99 beats per minute. The acquisition was performed uh, at the end systole with multi-segment reconstruction of the whole heart data over two cardiac cycles. Note that the effective radiation dose was only 2.2 millisievert in this clinical case. All the patient Patients, uh, challenging patients, are patients with coronary calcifications and coronary stents, as you can see in these two clinical examples. These patients require a, spatial a high spatial resolution in combination with uh, the iterative reconstruction. So in patients with high uh, heavy calcification defined as an Agatzen score of more than 400, 
Ranker reported an improved uh, image quality with less image noise and a reduction of the calcium volume, indicating that there was less blooming artifacts. And also more importantly was that there was an improved diagnostic accuracy in the same study. However, in another study, a reduced diagnostic performance was seen in patients with a high Agatzen score compared to patients with a lower Agatzen score uh, using the iterative reconstruction, suggesting that the blooming artifacts are not completely resolved with the iterative reconstruction. Here I show you a clinical example of a patient in uh, my institution with uh, calcifications at the proximal part of the LAD. I did different uh, reconstruction kernels, and you can see the blooming artifacts with the smooth kernel. And using a high-resolution kernel with the RD3D iterative reconstruction, you can see that there is less uh, calcium volume, and there is less in compared to the smooth kernel, and there is less uh, image noise compared to the standard filter back projection with a better delineation of the vessel contours. In the next FIVO study, a multi-vendor multi study evaluating the iterative reconstruction, a radiation dose reduction of 80% has been reported compared with the filter back projection, but also a lower Agatzen score and a lower calcium volume has been reported. So you can see the clinical example I reconstructed with the RD3D and the filter back projection in the same patient. And you can see the difference of the total Agatzen score using the RD3D reconstruction compared to the filter back projection. So caution should be taken when evaluating the Agatzen score with the iterative reconstruction, although on less than 3% of cardiac risk reclassification has been reported by another study in a, in a population group of more than 100 patients using uh, iterative reconstruction compared to the filter back projection. Another patient population group are coronary stents. They are very challenging due to the beam hardening artifacts. And in a recent study, an improved image quality with a reduction of the strength, the volume of the stent struts, and a better intra-stent luminal area has been reported using a high-resolution kernel with iterative reconstruction compared to the filter back projection. And more importantly, an improvement of the inter-observer agreement for an instant stenosis has also been reported. You can see a clinical example um, of a patient in our institution, very low radiation dose, different um, kernels, a smooth kernel, reconstruction uh, with filter back projection, and the RD3D reconstruction. So you can see that there is, there is a reduction of the volume of the stent struts using the high resolution kernel with the RD3D reconstruction compared to the filter back projection and the smooth kernels. Moreover, you can see the, that there is some um, intimal hyperplasia at the proximal part at the stent that we can see uh, in the high resolution kernel with the RD3D, but not in, on using a smooth kernel and with the standard filter back projection, as you can nicely see on the orthogonal reformats. Compared to the smooth kernel reconstruction, the use of a high resolution kernel with the filter back projection, using with the iterative reconstruction, oh, sorry. You can better visualize the instant stenosis, as you can see in this clinical example, there was an instant stenosis of the uh, in, in the stent of the circumflex artery, and this was responsible for um, myocardial ischemia, as you can see in this uh, cardiac MR, perfusion MR, at the hypo-intense signal at the lateral wall of the mid and the apical chert, compared to the rest images. So these were the images of a 53-year-old 
very obese female, a very challenging scanning scanner. And you can see that there is very noise in, on the axial and the 3D uh, reconstructions. But using the harder 3D iterative reconstruction, you can see that there is less image noise and an improved image quality while maintaining the same radiation dose. So in conclusion, the main purpose of the iterative reconstruction is the overall reduction of the radiation dose, but also an improved image quality in cardiac CT can be seen in patient groups and challenging patients such as obese patients, patients with coronary stents and heavy calcifications with an improved diagnostic accuracy and inter-observer agreement, and a better visualization of the distal segments. Thank you very much.